recording. And I would like to welcome everyone to our webinar this morning. Thanks for joining us. My name is Joanna Nelson, and I am with the State of New Mexico's Economic Development Department. And we're really excited about today's presentation. We are joined by some fantastic partners at the Small Business Administration, the SBA, and um, they will be discussing an overview of the surety bond program. So really great information that, that will be shared today, and we're really thrilled that, that they're here to share their knowledge with us. So before we get started, I did want to let you know that this webinar is being recorded, and we will send out the um, information um, post-presentation. So you should have most of the key information afterward, and you'll be able to watch the live recorded uh, version as well. So um, please ask questions as we go along. There's a questions box on the right side of your screen in a little gray box, and uh, type them as they come, and we'll do our best to address those at the end of the presentation and then we also got your questions as you registered so we'll be addressing those as well so thanks again for joining us i did want to take a little bit of time to go over um, some of the um, programs that we have at at the state just so you're aware of them if you're not already like i said we'll send these out but um, you can see that we have a wide variety of financial programs that are available to small businesses and nonprofits. And um, please reach out to us if you have any questions. One of our key programs that I think could be a, a, a good um, fit for um, folks, especially during this time, is our collateral assistance program. Just want to highlight this, that this is our ability to offer collateral to businesses that are struggling uh, with collateral shortfalls or deficiencies. Um, we are able to purchase a CD in a bank to make up gaps in collateral. So if you are getting a loan, especially during these times, we know a lot of lenders are, are hesitant and uh, wanting to, to limit their risk. We can, we can provide some extra collateral and security for them to um, move forward with the project. And then some upcoming information or sessions for you. Um, I think tomorrow um, we will be um, having our sec second installation of the EDD mini series for business owners of color. Uh, this will be going over some basic business resources. That'll be at 12:30. Our funded meeting is today, and then we will be doing a webinar in January um, that that SBA will actually be participating in as well to go over import and export resources. So please join us on those if they sound relevant. And then uh, one other final thing, just wanna make sure everybody knows how to stay connected with our department. Uh, you can sign up for our news and updates newsletter that comes out every Friday. This provides resources not only on COVID-19 relief, but um, any, any uh, resources around business development as well as community development webinars and news around the state. Here's our website. You can also go to our, ch our YouTube channel and find all previous webinars that we have conducted over the past few years. Here's some key contact information. And then here are our regional reps. We have regional reps all over the state and please reach out to them. They are like the boots on the ground of our department. So without further ado, I want to kick things off and introduce our, our partners at the SBA. So we have today Peter Gibbs, who's the director of SBA's Office of, of Surety Guarantees. And then we also have Kevin Valdez, who is the program review analyst. I hope I got those titles right. Um, we're also joined by Joshua Baca, who is representing the New Mexico State SBA office and is a business operations specialist. So really, really thrilled to have you all here today and we'll go ahead and turn it over to you. All right. Okay, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. 
Okay. Okay. All right. So um, before I get into my presentation, I'd like to tell the, the audience um, that if you are a small business and you're in the business that um, requires a contract surety bond, um, I can assure you that if you pay attention to what, what we're saying today, um, from this point forward, you should have no issues with getting bonding. Um, I, I strongly believe that the, the, the SBA surety bond guarantee program um, combined with a great relationship that we have with uh, um, surety companies and surety agencies is a resource that um, can really help a small business who, who have difficulties or hurdles in the standard bonded market. All right. Um, normally in a, in a, you know, the old way, and hopefully we're going to continue in the future how we used to do things by being in person. You know, I would stop my feet and let you know when, when it's something that I think you should take notes on. Um, but today, you know, I'm going to reemphasize those points as we go through the presentation. So you, so you should take notes about um, what I think is important and should help you, right? All right, let's get started. Next slide, please. Um, hold on. Yep. Just want to let you know that SBA has your back as a, as it pertains to uh, contract surety bonds. Uh, next slide, please. So the Office of Surety Guarantees, you know, we help small businesses who are having barriers, or, um, hurdles, obstacles, um, by creating access and opportunity for them to qualify for contract bonds, include increase your bonding capacity and growing your business. Next slide. Through our partnership with, with with uh, private um, treasury listed surety companies, you can get bid bonds, performance bonds, payment bonds, payment and performance bonds, and ancillary bonds for your business. Uh, let me try to explain to you what an ancillary bond is. Um, an ancillary bond is if you get a pay, if you if you get a payment of performance bond and then there is something that's connected to that bond, for example, um, there might be a maintenance period um, that that's connected to that bond. Um, we we consider those ancillary bonds, and we provide guarantees to those types of bonds. Next slide, please. So the SBA Security Bond Program, um, we, we don't write bonds for small businesses, but what we do is we guarantee bonds for small businesses through a partnership with treasury listed surety companies and currently we have over 450 agents. And we help businesses who are having difficulties in the standard market. You know, difficulties doesn't have to be negative either, right? Difficulties can be you're a small business and you're in a bonding relationship and the bonding agent wants to keep you at a certain level of capacity. They might say to you, hey, listen, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to bond anything above $500,000. Well, if they are a partner with us, um, I can assure you that because SBA guarantees 80 to 90% of a bond, they should be in a position to increase your capacity. And that is not really a ne necessarily a negative thing. Um, you might be in a situation where you're a small business 
and you're you're getting bonds, but you're getting bonds through your general contractor. Our program allows you will will put you in a position where you can get bonds for your company for your own company. All right. Next slide. How do you benefit as a small business? You get an opportunity to grow your company. You can increase your your opportunities, and SBA has flexible um, underwriting requirements. And we're going to get into details about these as we go through the presentation. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the, the impact that our program is having, um, we guarantee um, annually around $7 billion in contract bonds. And in, in, in FY 2019, we helped over 1,800 small businesses obtain bonds. And many of those businesses obtained multiple bonds. Uh, of course, that's why we got to the $7 billion. Uh, next slide. How does um how does your company get evaluated for um for bonding? Um, hold on one second. The new world that we're in. The phone rings in the middle of a presentation. <laughs> Yeah, so how does the company get evaluated on, on to get bonded? Um, so we look at the capacity, your ability to complete the work, um, and that they're going to look at your your experience in the in the field and in, in the trade that you deal in, the the your key personnel, what kind of experience they have, how do you run your your day to day operations, you know. Um, they're going to look at the, you know, the size of jobs that you've completed, and then they're going to make a determination whether you can complete that job or not. As far as the capacity is concerned, then they're going to look at they're going to look at your capital, you know, um, they're going to look at your your company's uh, profitability and the quality of the financial statements that your company has. Um, so. The one thing that I would tell you is that if your if your business um, if an agent submits an application a bond in, a bond guarantee application to SBA um, we understand that if you're a small business and you're go, you're you're going after contract let's say in the the four hundred thousand dollar range it makes no sense. For you to go out here and get a, an audited financial statement, which might be a, a requirement in the standard bonding market. Um, so the level of financial statement that is required is based on the size of the contract that you're going after. For example, all contracts that are two million and below, we require an in-house financial statement. We know that some companies in the standard market, uh, they they may require a company to have audited financial statements regardless of the size of the contract that they're going after. So on the low end, like I said, up to $2 million, we, we would look at um, an in-house financial statement. But if you're looking at a larger contract like 6.5 or above, we're going to require the, aud the audited financial statement for that. And, and the other thing that's, that a company is evaluated on is the character. And that basically means, you know, uh, are you paying your suppliers? Do you pay your employees? Um, how do you manage your personal credit history and your business reputation? Um, so this is what a company looks at to, to, to do a thorough underwriting of you as a business to make a determination as to whether they're going to honor or, or, or issue you a bond for a project. Next slide, please. 
So we talked about some of the benefits. I want to go into a little detail uh, and probably give you some examples. Uh, lower working capital. Um, so if you, I'm going to use a million dollar contract as an example. If you're a small business and you, you're going after a million dollar contract, the standard bonding market, they're going to require you to have 10% of that contract amount in liquid cash to qualify for a bond. So if you're going after a million dollar contract, you're going to require you to have $100,000 to get that million dollar contract. Okay. If you go to, if you find an SBA authorized agent and they submit an application to us, because they are one of our partners as a small business, we tell the surety company and the agent that we're okay with 5%. So instead of having $100,000 in the bank, we're okay at 5%, right? So now we have reduced your cash um, outlay from from uh, 100,000 to 50,000, right? So we've lowered your working capital. The next thing is um, in the standard bonding market, when they underwrite the account, like I said, on a million dollar contract, they're gonna require you to have $100,000 liquid cash in the bank. If you are a business and you have a business line of credit and it comes through our program, the unused portion of that business line of credit can count towards that 5%, right? So we have reduced the 10% working capital requirement to 50,000, which is 5% of the contract dollar amount. And if you have a business line of credit, the unused portion can be used towards that 5%, right? So if you have a $200,000 um, business line of credit and you have 50,000 that's unused, um, you will qualify for a bond um, in our program. All right, hopefully that makes sense to you. And like I said earlier, the financial statement requirements uh, or level of financial statement requirements is based on the, the contract size, dollar size, okay? Needless to say, we have many small businesses that participate in our program. They don't have much cash in the bank, but they're getting credit. They're getting surety credit. So one would say, um, how, does, how, does a, how does a program, you know, how can it be successful if they're, if they're having these flexible underwriting criteria? Well, I will tell you that in our, in our program, the default rate currently is less than 3%. So we don't have that many businesses who go into default. Um, if you compare that to the standard market, and of course the standard market is much has a much greater universe than what we deal with, but the default rate in the standard market is usually around 28 to 29%. And we're less than 3%. Next slide, please. This kind of illustrates what I talked about earlier. If you go into the standard market, you know, um, for every $1 in the standard market, you can get uh, $2 in SBA. And if you utilize one of our agents um, and they put your application through SBA. Um, so if in the standard market, you're eligible for contracts around a million dollars in the SBG program, you will qualify for contracts around two million. Next slide, please. This is, um, I'm not gonna read it to you, but you guys can read what uh, one of our small businesses, I believe she 
is from Jackson, Mississippi, um, African American female who she um, had a lot of issues and obstacles getting bonded. She linked up with uh, with our district office, and now she has a thriving business in Mississippi. Next slide, please. Um, uh, probably what I'm most proud of in our program, and that is we have a very, very user-friendly system and process. Um, we're probably one of the few federal programs where the entire process is online to include uploading documents to our system um, from the small businesses, from the agents. You know, we have an we have an online application process. I'm also very proud of my staff. We have uh, very experienced um, and professional staff um, that's here to help you or help the agent um, when they submit applications to SBA. Next slide, please. So if, you're, if your agent submits an application on your behalf to SBA, uh, we process applications in less than two days. Uh, we also have what's called a quick app, and that is for contracts that's 400,000 or less. And sometime next year, we're going to be raising that to 500,000. Uh, we just signed off. I just signed off on the rule actually this week. So one of the changes that we're going to be doing is increasing the quick app to 500,000. But right now it's at 400,000. So if you have a contract that you're going after, um, if you have a project that you're going after, and, and the dollar value is $400,000 or less, SBA, we don't require any, any paperwork or documentation, and um, we process those applications within minutes sometimes, but it will not be more than 24 hours to process that application. Yes, we do. We guarantee the types of bonds that we guarantee. We guarantee bid bonds, performance bonds, payment bonds, ancillary bonds. Um, we, the dollar amounts that we can go up to, uh, on an individual contract, we can go up to $6.5 million. If it is a federal contract, we can go up to 10 million. And again, I told you about the quick app. Quick app is for contracts currently 400,000 and below. Um, hopefully by June, we're going to raise that to um, 500,000 and below, and we don't require any paperwork, um, of course, other than the contract once you get it um, um, to get approval on a quick application. Next slide, please. Of course, any, you know, SBA, um, whether it's through the surety bond program or uh, venture capital program or loan programs, you know, you have to be a small business um, to qualify uh, to participate uh, in our programs. And that is based on the average annual revenues for construction service and supply firms or the average number of employees for manufacturers. Um, a general contractor based on the NAICS code, um, a business that's around 37.5 uh, 37 million is considered a small business. Other requirements is you, you, you must be current on taxes um, or have a repayment agreement and you're timely on it. Uh, and of course, you have to pass the underwriting standards. Uh, what I would say about taxes, because there's a lot of misinformation, if I, if I owe taxes, you know, uh, will I, am I eligible? Yeah. Um, if you owe taxes, you 
you are eligible as long as you have a plan with the IRS and you are timely with your payments and you will definitely qualify for um, getting um, surety credit through SBA. Next slide, please. How do you qualify as a small business? Of course, you must possess good character. The other part is it must be clear in the contract that a bond is required. Um, you, it must, you must be a U.S.-based for-profit business with legal resident owners. And you must be able to do business with the federal government and not be involved in a current bankruptcy proceedings. Next slide. Of course, there are fees. Um, um, there are no fees if it's a bid bond. Um, if you're if you're awarded a contract, uh, you must pay SBA 0.6% of the contract amount. That is the contractor's fee, and then there is going to be a surety premium that's charged by the surety, and that premium is usually anywhere between 1.5 to 3%. Um, premium that you must pay the surety companies. Next slide, please. So my office, um, this is how we're broken up. I, I have three underwriting offices, Seattle, Denver, and Washington, D.C., and it kind of tells you what states um, will most likely underwrite your application. Um, let me let me emphasize a point here. Um, as a small business, if you if you're looking for bonding, you would have to find an agent, an authorized agent, on our website. And as a small business, that's who you would be interacting with. And the agent would submit the application to SBA. The application is processed, reviewed, and 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 and, and made and make a decision within in less than two days. And once we make the decision, then the um, the contractor would have to pay the fee to pay.gov, and in less than two days, you'll be able to get the bond for your project. Um, I have a very responsive staff. So if you, if you, um, and again, I just want to be clear, if you're looking for a bond, the agent that's going to be communicating with SBA. So if you have any concerns, you need to go through the agent and then the agent will come to us. But, you know, it takes us less than two days to process applications. So we don't really communicate with small businesses that much. Um, but from time to time, you know, there might be a delay in the, and if you if you if they're telling you that they submitted the application to SBA and then it's like two weeks later and you haven't received a decision, then I would tell you to call my office and we'll try to figure out what's going on. But this but we don't have any applications in our system that stays in our system more than I would say five days. Okay. Next slide, please. Mike Williams, president and CEO of CC, CCI Surety, is one of our largest um, partners, and they are located in Minnesota. And it, these are his words about our program. Again, I'm not going to read it to you. You guys can read it. I'll give you a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds. <laughs> And of course, if you need a bond, you have to go to our website. Uh, the address is on the bottom of this slide. And find an agent. We have 
local agents and we also have uh, agents that have a national footprint. Um, and if you if you're new to bonding, uh, so the way bonding works is you have a surety company like Liberty Mutual is one of our partners, but you as a small business will most likely communicate with an agent who Liberty Mutual has given the power to write on their paper. So you will most likely interact with a agency like a CCI and less likely to communicate with the actual surety company. Hopefully that makes sense. Next slide. My team and I, we, we work extremely hard to make sure that we find the best partners for our program. Currently we have 41 surety companies that's listed on here, but we have over 350 agents around the country. And um, we have companies in Puerto Rico and Guam. Um, there, is a, there is an association called Surety and Fidelity Association of America, SFAA. And you can do a Google search, SFAA. And so every year they have a list of their top, their top 100 surety companies. Well, SBA, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say that eight of SFAA's top 10 surety companies partner with SBA. And to be a partner with SBA, you must be a treasury listed surety company. The bottom line is if you're not familiar with this stuff, you're dealing with quality companies um, who, are, who are here with our partnership to really help you, the small business. Next slide, please. All right. This tells you how to find an authorized agent. Um, so before I know the next slide is questions, uh, I just want to, um, to to emphasize a couple of things, right? And I, I told you earlier, you know, whenever I give these presentations on my team, we give the presentations. It's usually in person. Uh, a, a couple of things that I want to want want you to take notes on. So this is me stomping my feet, right? Number one, the biggest issue that we see, and we get these types of calls all day, every day, is um, small businesses who need a surety bond and they are a subcontractor to a general contractor, right? So they, they're, they're awarded a contract and they may be having hurdles getting a bond and the general contractor will tell them, hey, just you know, just use our bonds, right? You can you can be under our bonds. Um, if you don't get anything out of what we're presenting today, the one thing that I want you to understand as a small business is you should always get your own bond. Do not fall for being under someone else's bond. Why is that important? It's important because, and, and this is the calls that we get. Mr. Gibbs, I've been in business for five years. I have been a subcontractor to Valdez Construction Company, and I've always been under his bond. Um, we had a separation, good, bad, or indifferent, and I'm trying to get my own bond. In trying to get my old bond, I'm given this six, seven page document called a contractor's questionnaire. And they ask me, what is the largest job, the largest job that I have been bonded on? 
But Mr. Gibbs, I've always been under Valdez construction bond. So the, my largest job is zero. And I know that I've been performing at the $500,000 level, but I cannot seem to get a bond. Well, that is a very real situation. And it's because um, the, the small business made a decision not to get a bond and to be under the subcontractor's bond. But when it's time, well, that's, that relationship, when it's severed, good, bad, or indifferent, and you're out there trying to get your own bond, they're going to ask you what's the largest bonded job that you did as a company. And in that scenario, the answer is zero. And what that means is you, you, you may get a bond, but it will not most likely be at the level that you were getting, that you were, the, the size job that you were, when you were working with Valdez Construction, um, because you didn't get bonded, right? Um, now that you know that there's a resource here at, uh, with, with who SBA, who we partner with, um, now you know that you can go out here and get your own bond so that you can stand on or, or create your own capacity for your, for your company. Right, that's one of the, the the biggest issues that we hear from small businesses. Um, the other part that I would tell you is the way the bonding market works is let's say you have a hundred a hundred thousand dollar bond. You did a project for a hundred for a hundred thousand um, dollars. The next Project that you go after can be two hundred thousand. When you finish that two hundred thousand, then they'll look at you at four hundred thousand. So the the surety um, industry they will consider uh, doubling whatever your whatever completed project. They will consider the next job they will consider twice the size of the first job right hopefully that makes sense so like i said if you if you're taking notes the important thing here is get your own bond there's a resource that can help you get your own bond um, go to the to the website find an agent and um and you'd be on your way. The other thing that I want you to understand is um, the rates that a surety company or the premium rates, the fee that a surety company charges should never be a surprise to you, right? Because surety companies must um, file their rates with the state insurance office. Um, why am I telling you this? Because the other common things that, that we hear is small business, small businesses who say to us, Mr. Gibbs, I'm, I'm getting bonding, but I'm paying eight, nine, 10% for my bond. That should never happen. Um, you can always call the state insurance company to find out what rate that particular surety company charges. So no agent should ever be charging you. And I've, I, I have, I have heard uh, the, 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 the highest rate that I have heard in my many years in this business is a small business that was paying 15% for bonding. So again, this is another note that you want to take. Uh, the surety company rates are filed with the state insurance office, but if any agent is charging you more than 5%, um, that might be too expensive. 
All right. Next slide, please. So that concludes uh, my presentation. Hopefully you learned something today. Um, myself and Kevin Valdez, who works in my office, we will answer any questions or, or do we want to wait until Joshua makes his presentation before we open it up for, for everyone? But in, in either case, I'll take the easy questions from my office and Kevin is going to take the hard questions. <laughs> I, I believe we would probably need to take questions right now since you, it looks like you might need to get going in a, in a few minutes. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right, we had a few questions come in prior to the presentation. So I'm going to um, address those. And you did such a phenomenal job. I think you answered a lot of these. So um, some of these might be a little repetitive. Stephen just asked, what's a great slash good rate for bonds, which you just addressed. I don't know if you want to add any, any more insight into that. No, no. The, the key thing is, you know, don't, don't, um, you know, shop your business around. There are many different agents. You know, don't. Like I said, the, the average rate for a bond should be around three, three and a half right now. If you're paying more than three and a half, then I would definitely shop. Um, and that's one. Of the, that's one of the good things about our program is that we we know that our agents are not charging small businesses ridiculous rates. Because we won't allow it. That's great. Okay, and I want to encourage anyone, if you do have questions, type them into the questions box. Um, some of the ones that came in prior, um, this one might make a little bit more sense to you all, but um, this question is getting at, is there any special preference for a minority disabled veteran companies within the program? Um, no, I mean the, the, the only the the only, the advantage uh, or the incentive I would I would say the incentive is for the surety company if you are a veteran um, or a disabled veteran owned business uh, the guarantee that SBA provides is 90%, um, but but nothing that that directly goes to the small business. Um, the, the incentive is for the surety company to, to give that veteran-owned business an opportunity. And let me tell you that I, I'm an advocate for veterans. I am a 27-year Army officer, retired lieutenant colonel, so I always try to help you know, veterans as much as I can. Great, thank you for that. Here's a question that is saying, uh, let's see, how is the value of a surety bond calculated and incorporated into a construction bid? Well, um, I, I would say that, um, that's a, let me just say, that's a very good question, right? There's a couple of things that I would answer to that question. Number one, this, if you're a small business, you should be establishing a relationship with an agent right now, right? Uh, just like you have a relationship with a banker, uh, just like you have a relationship with your CPA or whoever does your, you know, the books and records of your company. Um, and once you have that relationship, the agent will let you know, number one, based on your financial history, you should be going after jobs at this, uh, at, at this range, right? And then once you know what range you should be going, you should find out from your agent what, it, what would be the premium charge, right? So if they tell you, hey, if you get a bond, the premium will be 2%, then that's what you should put in your bid. And the, the bid amount is, in most cases, um, um, reimbursed by the owner, 
when you submit your first draw, you should include how much you, you paid for the bond. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. Great info. Yeah. Okay, and then we did get a question about um, does, you know, is a startup business eligible to utilize the program? Yes, I mean, startups are eligible. I mean, in, in many cases, um, we, you know, when you're a startup company, you're going to definitely have hurdles in getting bonded, right? Um, but we see companies, for example, um, let's say a Turner construction company, and I'm not, I'm not showing any favoritism to any company. That's the first one that came to me. Turner construction, like Kevin or Joshua and Kevin, maybe they worked at Turner for 10 years, right? And now they decided I wanted to start my own business. To the standard bonded market, you know, Kevin and Joshua construction companies are brand new companies, right? So they would have to go out there and gain experience, get some jobs uh, before they will probably get bonded from a surety company. If they go through one of our agents and surety companies, we see many cases where, you know, superintendents and project managers from another company started start their own company, and then they don't have to wait that two, three years before they can get a decent bond. The only issue here is when you start, when you're a startup, you know, establishing your your starting point, like like what size contracts should I be going after? That's reasonable and acceptable by the surety company, and and that means that you know if you worked at Turner and you worked on projects that were five million dollars. Um, I can tell you that most likely you will, you will not get a bond for five million, but your starting point may be a million, right? Because they'll have to look at how much money you got into the bank, into, into the into the company. Um, but to answer your question, absolutely, we we support businesses all the time that are startups, but you have to consider all the the different the experience, how long they've been in the industry. Um, to determine a good starting point. Okay, great. Thank you. And that about sums up the questions. Oh, we had one more. Um, let's see if I, this is kind of a longer one. Um, and I don't know if you can see that one, Kevin, that's in the questions box. Um, yes, I can. Uh, okay. Yeah, so they're they're wanting to know about indemnity and um, whether spousal indemnity is required. Yes. Um, that yes, your your spouse must must sign the indemnity agreement. Um, I I know well. We you know Kevin and I know that we do. We have heard of some surety companies waiving spousal indemnity. But unfortunately, um, if they come through our program, we are not waiving the uh, spouse sign in the indemnity agreement. Okay, and, uh, excellent. I'll go ahead and mention the, the next one that came in. <laughs> Uh, there, uh, there's another question that came through that's basically asking about um, sw and when switching with between agencies, if they were to switch agencies to utilize the SBA, uh, would they leave off? Uh, would they pick up where where the other agency left off as far as their their um, cost and job size goes, or would they uh, would that be up to the agent? Is what it asks. Um, I, I think I think that would definitely be up to the agent. Um, I don't. Um, I mean, you, you know, if if you have a if you've been 
um, on a steady track and there's been no issues. I mean, I, I, I don't know why the agent would not want to continue um, supporting you at the level of the prior. I mean, if, if, if the, if the, if the, if the, if the agent was not an SBA agent, you'll probably end up getting um, more uh, capacity through our program. But that's, I mean, that's my estimation. I, I, I think that we would have to know the specifics of your case to really get into that. But, but um, if the, in general terms, I would say that if the agent was not an SBA agent, your capacity would most likely increase um, if they decide to put you through SBA. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And Jennifer, thank, thank you for answering that question too. Okay, Peter, Kevin, thank you so much. This is so informative. This is great. And really appreciate your ability to share your time and information with us. This was fantastic and providing all the, the contacts. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having us. And uh, I want to apologize to Josh for a week. I got another meeting at one o'clock. I wanted to hear what you, what your presentation was, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that, um, let me know when you're doing something next time and I'll chime in. Not a problem, Mr. Gibbs. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, take care. Y'all take care. Thank take you care. so much. And, and, and if there, if you know, if there are any other questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. I'll we'll send them to Kevin, and, and we'll we'll get you guys a response. Thank you. We really appreciate it, and thanks for all the work you all are doing. No problem. Happy Keep holidays. Bye. Happy holidays Bye. to you. Bye. All right. Okay, Joanna, can, can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, I'm so gonna... I, I'm afraid to push any buttons. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I am making you the presenter right now. Yes, that was okay. funny. Um, Josh accidentally started the broadcast for us, so that was, that was fun. Always exciting. My apologies, everyone. My apologies. <laughs> no apologies <laughs> you... needed. Can you see my um, my my PowerPoint? Yep, we can hear you and see your presentation. So take it away. Okay, awesome. And I, I think we're we're kind of over on our time, so I'll try to make it uh, as quick as possible. But I just wanted to first say thank you, Joanna. Uh, it, it's always great to partner with you in the New Mexico Economic Development Department, and uh, we we appreciate your partnership. And then. Of course, thank you to Mr. Gibbs and, and Mr. Valdez on their presentation. The SBA's Office of Surety Guarantees and, and the bonding program that the SBA has is really a, a, a very good and effective program. So I would highly encourage anybody to look into it. And if you have any other questions, you can, of course, reach out directly to Mr. Valdez and Mr. Gibbs' office, but you can also reach out to our office. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and get into mine and I'll, I'll I'll be a little bit quicker on it, but uh, I have my contact information at the end if anybody needs to get a hold of me if you can't get your questions answered today. Okay, so we're still good on the audio and the visual. You can see my presentation as it should be. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, awesome. So let me move on to the next slide here. Okay, so um, just a quick overview of the SBA. We're, our purpose as a federal government agency is to support the growth and development of small businesses throughout the country. Uh, we have a number of programs available, a number of um, partners that we work with that provide assistance to small business, uh, small businesses, especially at this time, right? Because of what's going on with COVID. But uh, we provide area and uh, or resource uh, resources and support in, in three main areas, and I'll kind of go over those a little bit later. But as I, I, do, I always bring up this slide because there's always a question that comes about, you know, am I really a small business and what does that mean? Does it mean, you know, I'm just 500 employees or less or, you know, what's the case? 
And the truth of the matter is, is as Mr. Gibbs mentioned, it depends on the industry that you work in, right? It can be either based on your average annual revenues. So recently the change for, there's been a change for that in that calculation. You can now average your last five years versus three years to calculate your size standard. Or if you're in, typically in a manufacturing industry, it's gonna be calculated based upon your uh, employee count. Okay, three main areas, counseling, access to capital and contracting, of course, with uh, declared disasters, we have support programs in, in that respect. Okay, so in, in terms of counseling, we pro the SBA provides funding to partner organizations, such as the Small Business Development Center and others, to give that one-on-one -on -one counseling for businesses that need assistance with developing a business plan, with marketing, and uh, you know finance and, and accounting and that and that all that kind of good stuff that comes into play when when you're trying to uh, move your business along, right? So they we the SBA itself leans on their partners for that one-on-one -on -one counseling. Our district office consists of a small group, and we primarily provide oversight of a lot of these programs. And uh, our, we have a you know the district director, the deputy director, and, and a few others. And, and in my role, I work as a business opportunity specialist that works primarily in the in the government contracting area and an 8A business development program. And then I have a colleague that works as a lender relations specialist, and she works with the lending programs. And, and that's, you know, those are the areas that we, we provide oversight and, and assistance in. And of course, occasionally we'll, we'll you know, pr try to provide information to the public as, as we are now. But we really lean on our resource partners to give that one-on-one -on -one guidance and, and counseling. And we have a number of centers uh, throughout the state of New Mexico, throughout the country, uh, through the SBDC's network that provide that one-on-one -on -one counseling. Okay, and we also have SCORE, which is one of our other very important resource partners because they do essentially a lot of the same things that uh, our other partner organizations do and that they counsel and they provide one-on-one -on -one counseling and guidance. However, they they have a network of um, uh, experienced professionals who have volunteered their time and their expertise to assist small business. And, and in Albuquerque, I'm proud to say that we have a, a very outstanding and, and robust uh, SCORE chapter as well as in, in Santa Fe and in Las Cruces. So I would highly recommend you reach out to any one of them as well. And of course, we, we have veteran business development uh specifically for you know for veterans and the the nice thing about the veteran business outreach center in new mexico is that it's partnered or it's worked through the new mexico department of veteran services so it's it's nice for service disabled veterans and or better known businesses to uh reach out to our our v, local vboc because they might be able to uh, not only get assistance with business development and counseling but also they might you know, other veteran related assistance that the state has to offer. I always thought that, that was a really unique and really cool thing that's uh, that's really unique to New Mexico. Uh, I'm not aware of any other uh, state veteran offices that work with the VBOC in that manner, but we're fortunate enough to have that here in New Mexico. We also have our web women business centers throughout the country. Locally, we work and partner with West. And again, it's an outstanding organization that provides really, really good uh, assistance, really good counseling assistance, and, and they have other programs that are available. And uh, I would highly recommend working with them as well. So in terms of contracting with the federal government throughout the country, there are procurement technical assistance centers, and their focus is to provide business, uh, small business assistance in terms of government contracting and marketing and all that kind of good stuff. We have a really good local uh, PTAC and uh, we, we work closely with them, especially with the small business government contracting programs that the SBA has in place. So I would highly recommend them as well. They work a little bit differently compared to the other resource partners. They receive funding from the Department of Defense and the state of New Mexico uh, versus from the SBA 
but they are a valued partner for our small businesses. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of move it right along. So in terms of access to capital, the SBA has a number of programs, right? And you heard about one of those just now with the, with the surety bond program. And, and again, the surety bond program is an excellent program. Not, it's not widely known, uh, but we're trying to change that by giving the information out and, and providing that to any stakeholder that's interested. And, and it's very effective for those companies that need it. In addition, we have our loan programs. And basically, the way it works is the SBA will back up a loan to a, to a, a traditional lender. I think most of the lenders throughout New Mexico participate with the SBA loan programs in some capacity. Um, however, some of them might do a little bit more than others, and uh, they they work in the different programs, 7A, 504, and then we have micro loan, uh, micro lenders rather that uh, we work with that that might be a better fit for some borrowers uh, versus other borrowers. And in addition, we as it is now, we have uh, a disaster program where, where the SBA can loan money directly to small businesses whenever there's a, a declared disaster. So as an example, I'm sure you've all have heard about you know what's been going on with our economic injury disaster loan and, and how it relates to the pandemic, right? So if you um, if you if there is a declared disaster declared by the the, the state's governor then the SBA can come in and, and issue those loans directly to, to uh, small business borrowers. Now, it's one of the only programs where the SBA actually loans the money out versus through a, a uh, partner lender. Oops, excuse me. And I, I added this information to my PowerPoint because I wanted everybody to have the information um, at, after the, the presentation because it's going to be important whenever you approach a lender, right? Because I, I, we get questions from time to time, well, what do I need to provide to the lender in order to, you know, get a loan? And I'm a new startup, so, so it might be that much harder, you know. So after, the, after we're done here, I will be sure to have my presentation available. And if Joanna wouldn't mind sending it out to all the participants, I, I, I'd greatly appreciate that. But I, I added all these things to what is typically expected to... Uh, apply for a, a loan, whether it's backed up by the SBA or not, and and these are some you know some things that are important to understand. So you know you need your resume, information about your personal background, business plan, tax returns, financial statements, your bank statements, and information about collateral that you're going to put up with it if required, if it's required. And in addition, the uh, bank will sometimes ask for legal documentation about your business, so your articles of incorporation or organization, you know, if you have a, an operating agreement maybe or, or meeting minutes and things like that. So again, I added those just for your reference at a later date if you needed to um, make the application in the near future. Hopefully that helps out. Another resource that we have available to small businesses that are, are working through research and development is the SBIR STTR program. The SBIR stands for Small Business Innovation Research, and STTR stands for Small Business Technology Transfer. So this is one of the few instances where the SBA, or not, not the SBA, excuse me, the government provides grants to small business, because as you can imagine, we get that question from time to time. Uh, can I get a grant to, you know, for my, my small business? And, and the answer is typically no, but if you are, into research and development, the SBIR or STTR program can um, can you know can maybe a good fit for you. And locally, we we've recently signed a a strategic alliance memorandum with the St uh, New Mexico State University Arrowhead Center, and they are going to be one of your organizations that you would want to go to to get support in regard to writing a proposal for one of these grants. And the, the, S, the way it works is the SBA is partnered with various government agencies. And depending on what their needs are at that time, they might put out a solicitation for uh, an, a business to come in and, and uh, develop something or provide something that, that's needed, right? 
and they can give funding to that business to you know to develop do conduct research and development so there are different various stages of that those programs and for more information you can go to sbir.gov and i added the hyperlinks to these organizations in, in these powerpoint slides or you can go to the arrowhead center and, and ask for assistance there okay so contracting is the area that i work specifically in that, that's what i've been doing for for the sba for the last eight years and, and working through the 8A business development program, which involves government contracting, but is not specifically a government contracting program. So generally speaking, the federal government has to spend at least 23% of the contract dollars for small business. They have to award 23% of those contracts to small businesses. Uh, I'm happy to say, and to, to tell you today that last year in 2019, the federal government exceeded its goal and actually achieved a 26 and a half percent which was the equivalent of 132.9 billion dollars i just wanted to check my notes to make sure i was accurate but that's that's significant for small business and and we're hoping that you know it can be increased to more because small businesses really are a vital component to our, our economy if not the most uh, vital component to our economony and most businesses, US, US based businesses in the in the country, throughout the country rather, are small. They're small, over 99%. And, and that may sound um, maybe a shock to hear, but, but over 99% of the small businesses in the country or the businesses in the country are small. Just a very small percentage are actually large. So, so it's, it's very, very important. Uh, that the federal government supports those small businesses. Okay, so I, I just wanted to further elaborate a little bit. Of that 23%, we have these various government contracting programs for socioeconomic categories. And that 23% is broken down uh, and has its own percentage requirements. So for women-owned small business, there's a 5% requirement for small disadvantaged businesses to include the 8A cert certified businesses, that's 5%. Now I wanna dis distinguish that though, not every small disadvantaged business is 8A by default. 8A is a certification for those businesses that qual meet the small disadvantaged business qualifications. And um, those are some kinds, sometimes confusing and the agencies have a small disadvantaged business goal, not an 8A, uh, certified business goal however they they can make contracts and and set aside contracts through the 80 program if they choose to do so there's a three percent goal for hub zone small business hub zone certified small businesses and hub zone stands for historic historically underutilized business zones these are economically distressed areas and the idea is to allow some of the businesses to spur economic growth within those areas and then, of course, for service disabled veteran owned small businesses, the, the goal is 3%. Now, here, here are some uh, resources to get plugged into our network, and I would highly recommend utilizing them. And you can, if you're looking for a loan and you're not really sure which lender to approach, you can utilize the Lender Match program. You can get local assistance um, through our district office, and then, of course, our, our resource partner in our or other partner organizations. And then you can also receive email updates by going to sba.gov forward slash updates. And, and anytime that something comes about, you can, you, you'll be notified of that. I posted the contact information for myself and for Ms. Shelly Brown, because we, like I said, primarily work, I primarily work with the small business government contracting programs. And my colleague Shelly works as a lender relations specialist in the loan programs. Now all the other programs, of course, we can provide assistance or get you connected to the appropriate party. And uh, we look forward to supporting you. And thank you so much for joining us today. And if there's anything you need at all, please don't hesitate to, to email me or give me a call. This is my cell phone and this is uh, Shelly's direct line. So feel free to give us a call at any time. And that concludes my presentation. And I will go ahead and uh, hand it back over to you. Joanna, and if there are any questions, I'd be happy, more than happy to, to uh, answer those at this time. Okay, great. Thank you so much. That was a fantastic overview. 
And I'm not seeing any questions at this time, but as we all can see, here's the follow-up contact info for our state connection. So um, Josh, thank you again. And I wanna extend my, my thanks to Kevin and Peter and um, please reach out to us if we can be of any assistance. So um, I wanna wish everyone happy holidays and um, please take care. Happy holidays, Joanna, thank you again. And, and again, I apologize for um, setting us off too soon. <laughs> oh, the, uh, no worries. With the presentation. No worries, that I, keeps yeah. things exciting <laughs> these yeah, days. Oh, I know, I know, it's, it's very exciting. Thanks everybody and have a great day. Okay, bye, you take care.